this is the beginning of a tutorial I wanted to do to show you how to make a wind turbine out of a ceiling fan. And uh, the cool thing about this is I bought, I didn't even buy the ceiling fan. I found it on Craigslist uh, for free. So you find people giving away stuff on there all the time and this just happened to be one near where I work and I uh, went by today and picked it up for free. So uh, can't beat that. So I'm going to show you how to disassemble this thing to get to the parts that we need and um, then we'll get into more of the nitty gritty on how to get this thing working. Alright, so out of, the, out of the box we have uh, the main part here which uh, has the, uh, the motor in it. And of course it will come with a, a light fixture, a place to attach a light if it has one, or uh, just a case here that uh, houses all the, uh, the wires and the little pull chain there. Uh, keep, up, keep all the blades if you can. Um, you can use this for the furl on the back that the wind pushes around to keep uh, to keep the turbine from staying in a uh, very aggressive wind, so it pushes it out of the way. So keep these; these can come in handy. But we'll put them off to the side because we won't need those for a while. Uh, comes with another piece or two here may come in handy on how to mount it on uh, the galvanized pipe that we're gonna use later. I'll show you that later. And uh, some extra wire. You never know when you may need some wire to wire something up. So keep that handy. Some screws and bolts, whatnot. Never know. So we'll keep uh, we'll keep those handy in case we need them. Alright. So the first part is uh, just getting the, the motor outside of this casing. And you want to be careful because these wires are fragile. You don't want to tear those loose um, by any means. So mainly uh, the tools that you'll need is just a screwdriver, maybe a flathead uh, screwdriver and a hammer eventually. So what I'm going to do now is start taking some of this apart. And these fans will vary depending on what model you buy. So, um, But generally speaking they all have a casing here. You just take the screws out and just take it off piece by piece. Alright so I've taken the uh, the top part of the uh, ceiling fan off. This is the part that's next to the ceiling. You see here, these pieces here came off one piece at a time. So you just keep loosening Phillips screws out of here until you finally get it off. You'll, it kind of comes off piece by piece. It's not really hard to figure out. So uh, next thing we we'll gonna do is disassemble, uh, disassemble this part of it, which this part can just loop through there like that. But like I said, all these are different. Uh, ceiling fans are all made the same, but they're very similar. So um, just keep removing pieces till you get down to this unit. This is really what we're after. So um, I'm going to take all this, these wires out of this housing unit here and uh, disconnect everything. Uh, don't cut any of these wires yet. Just uh, take my word on it and uh, just remove them here. And we'll go from there. I'll be back in just a moment to show you what to do next. I wanted to show you some of these models will have a little plug system here where they just plug in together and you just pull them apart. That's the easiest, that's the best case scenario. Uh, sometimes they don't come like that, they'll be screwed in directly to whatever it is, the switch or whatever on the side of the housing. So either way, just disconnect the wires. Don't cut them. We need all this length that we can get. You'll see why later. Uh, so you can just toss this aside or if you think you may want to use this wire for other projects, you can hold on to it. It's up to you. But for now I'm putting it there. And uh, the next thing you're going to need a wrench to uh, loosen this. There's a nut here with a washer that holds this plate on right here. And uh, we don't want this plate. So we need to take that off. However, we do want the washers here. And uh, you'll see why later. Um, for now I'm going to work on getting that off and I'll be back in just a moment. Okay, so this was sort of a pain to get off this little plate here. This a uh, little nut that uh, was on the front of this, uh, the front part of this uh, bolt or the shaft that goes through the ceiling fan is really tight. So what you have to do is that the back side of this thing rotates. So I'll put a Phillips screwdriver through this hole. It's just big enough to pop through there so that whenever I hit back this way, 
this screwdriver props it up and holds it. So I had to put my adjustable wrench on there and tap it with the hammer. And when I did, I put the weight back on this screwdriver. You have to be careful now. You don't want to bend the shaft that comes through here. So I hit it a couple of good hard times with the hammer, with the side of the hammer. And uh, it worked loose. So there's the nut and this comes right off. I did have to snip this piece off, which is expected. But get it as close to the the plastic uh, housing as you can connector, and that's trash, obviously. Okay, so now we're down to this point, and uh, the next step is opening this casing up here. And uh, there's one, two, three, four screws here, and four on the other side. You have to take them all out. And uh, once I get that done, I'll come back and show you what to do next. Okay, so took all the screws out here, and uh, just give you a little heads up here. These three wires coming off here, you don't need them to. They're probably color coded differently for the, each fan, but uh, it's the white, the black, and the blue. It comes out towards the uh, the side where uh, runs up to the power box. Uh, for the lighting or the fan power or whatever, you don't need those. Um, in fact, you can see where they just run out the other side here. They're not wired to the inside of the motor. So pull out the blue, pull out the white, pull out the black. We don't need any of those. So now you're just left with these wires coming out the front here. And this is the side that has the blades mounted on it. So originally it's like that. Okay. And ultimately what we're going to do is take this casing apart and inside you'll see the copper coils that, that actually uh, power the fan and how you get started on opening this up is you take a flathead screwdriver and it's highly important to make sure that you don't warp this casing because if you do it will not spin evenly and it'll put it in a bind and we don't want to do that. So uh, this is the part that's going to come off. This side will just pop off. You can see that it's just uh, a plate surrounding the bearing there. So if we tap on it this way, all the way around a few times with the hammer, it ought to pop off. Now this is one of the more challenging parts of the whole project, but be patient with it. Don't warp it. and. Uh, I would like to demonstrate it on the camera, but I'm afraid that uh, it might take me longer than expected. So sometimes you might be able to just prong apart. If you can, great. Like that right there. Some of them are really tight. It may not work that easy. Okay, so I've gone a different direction here. I got the front plate off, and man, was that a task. Uh, I just bent up the outside of the frame pretty well. But uh, as long as the center is intact then we're okay because it's the part that's coming in to contact with the bearing there so what i did uh you saw the wires coming out here earlier i went ahead and pulled those through because it's going to be near impossible to get this back piece off which requires me to um that if i wanted to flop this around it required me taking this off and i don't think i can get it off so what i'm going to do is uh run these wires through this center pole um uh, out the back so that would be easier than dealing with this. You just can't, there's no feasible way to get that off without ruining this uh, center shaft. So, um, but anyway, the next step is finding the uh, highest ohm reading of these four wires. And uh, all you want to do is just take your multimeter here, turn it to, you can see here, 200 ohms is what I have it set on. And, uh, terminals in this position sorry if you can't hear me it's raining outside but um you want to find, a, find the highest ohm reading of these four wires so just for uh time's sake i've already figured out the highest reading are these two wires and they're about 73 73 and a half something like that uh so that's the high, highest ohm reading of the four wires that I have. So next what I'm going to do, being that I severed these wires a little too short, um, 
I'm going to take some bell wire that I bought at Lowe's and uh, basically just screw some uh, wire nuts on there, small as I can find, on the end of these two wires and fish them through the center pole and out the back. And uh, once we do that, we'll move on to the next segment uh, in this series. So that'll uh, that'll put us close to being done with this first part. All right, I'm gonna see if I can show you the best way to fish this wire in there. Now this is uh, pretty sure it's about 20 gauge. Uh, and I'm not I'm not 100 certain that it's 20 gauge, but. Uh, it's stiff enough to where you go in there and uh, slide up through this. Hopefully you'll do it as the yellow wire did. And maybe you can see that in there. Okay, see how it's pushing out that hole right there? Alright. So that's what we need to do. Just keep on until you feed it on through. And then I'm just going to grab the needle noses and pull it on through and attach a wire nut just like I did on uh, this wire here so once we'll do that once we do that I'll pull the excess back down through here to tighten things up in there and then pop this back in there uh, nice and snug so uh, I'll be back in just a moment all right you can see uh, got wires coming out the back there from our two highest ohm reading wires and we have uh, a zip tie here. I ran through two of these holes to kind of secure these wires down so they're not hitting the back of this when it spins. And uh, basically I just kind of uh, added some pressure here to this plate and uh, fit, it, fit the bearing back into uh, the place where it should be. And it spins rather well. Let's see here. Let me... So you can see there's a little bit of warp to the plate. It's not really going to matter uh, that much once we get it all said and done, but um, that's it for this segment. Uh, the next the next video will be showing um, how to create some uh, height on this rim here using metal banding, and from that point on, once we get that epoxy to inside of there, we're going to build up. Uh, our magnets and I'll show you how to do all that so that when you see this spin even just the smallest bit uh, with magnets in here it creates an electromagnetic field that runs through these wires ultimately out of here and uh, we'll get some voltage readings here so that's what we're trying to do get it uh, converted over to DC current so it's usable uh, alternating current uh, is not to be hooked up to anything you care about uh, because this produces an inconsistent wild voltage and it will fry most electronics so uh, don't do anything premature until you've watched uh, the entire series so uh, stay tuned I'll try to get the next one posted as soon as possible thanks bye thanks for watching be sure to click subscribe to get updates directly in your inbox